modded Minecraft is filled with a lot of things that change it drastically. There's a lot more to explore out in the world. There's a lot more to mine underground. There's a lot more to create, a lot more that can help you or hurt you in any particular mod pack. Most new players get overwhelmed very, very easily, and they don't know where to start or how to begin. That is what this video will help you with. Now, the first thing that I want to address is that I do not want this to be all about me telling you how to do stuff. I want this to be a community thing, all right? So those of you who are modded players who are here, you might learn something from this. I have no idea. I might know something that you don't, but I guarantee you're going to know something that I miss or that I don't know. So leave a comment about the information so other people can find it. And all of the other people, look for those comments. Look for the good tips that people are leaving and upvote them. And that way, people who are visiting this page trying to get into modded Minecraft can not only hear my words, but they can hear yours. And we can all help these players get to somewhere where they're going to be able to be sufficient and self-sufficient, I guess is the actual word. And they can be okay on modded Minecraft. Now, first and foremost, you're going to spawn with items in your hand. Ignore them for now. Put them in your inventory and do the normal Minecraft stuff, normal vanilla stuff. Break some trees, get some logs, make a crafting table, make some tools, dig down, get some stone, make some stone tools, and give yourself a little hidey hole. Get yourself safe because a lot of mod, mod packs, and I mean a lot, will make the nighttime very, very difficult. There's this thing called the Blood Moon. Those modded players I was just talking to, you guys know what I'm talking about. The Blood Moon is crazy, and there's there's a decent number of mod packs that include them, but even that is not the full extent of it. There are just people who create mobs that are really, really difficult. Infernal Mobs is one of them. There are some dangerous things in this world. All right, get inside and you will protect yourself from most of them. Next order of business, you know that you have a lot of mods installed when you've come to a mod pack. Most of them can be configured. All right, so if something is too hard or you think it's unfair or, or something just bothers you about it, know that you can most likely turn that feature off. Some mods don't allow you to turn everything off, but worse comes to worse, you can just remove the whole thing and then reload your world. And everything that that mod had will be re you know, removed. Depending on what you're removing, you might have a huge hole in your world, but it's possible to do, okay? Don't get overwhelmed by any one mod or any one creature. You know, you're, you're still learning. You don't need to worry about taking on everything in the whole world all at once. Focus on one thing at a time. Don't let the big list of items uh, intimidate you, all right? Now, now that you know and have, you know, stone tools, maybe you've gone and gotten iron. Maybe you've seen a lot of the stuff I'm about to show you. But if you take a look down here, there are a lot more ores in these worlds than you're used to. And I mean a lot. And no, just in case you're curious, I came down here beforehand and placed these torches. Caves do not come pre-lit in modded Minecraft. At least not typically. Sometimes there are glowing mushrooms or, you know, glowing something that spawn down here. But typically, nothing's lit up for you. But, and here's some interesting thing now. Oh, this must be a roguelike. You see the nether brick? Modded players, you see the nether brick? Anyway, so... What we've got is a whole lot of stuff for you to pick up, all right? When you go mining, you want all of this, but I want you to pay attention to something. You see up to the left, top left, you see what it's, it's telling me. Here's one of those difficult mobs. You see the sparkles? Yeah, stay away from that guy. Vortex, ooh, that makes it hard to stay away from. He sucks you in. Anyway, 
Uh, in case you're wondering, this is uh, the mod pack called MC Eternal. At the time of recording, it's actually becoming more and more popular and more and more of the uh, famous YouTubers are playing it. Uh, but we'll see how popular it gets here in a little while. Anyway, so you can see what I'm looking at up here is there's a lot of red on the screen. There's It basically tells you everything in the tooltip. You can see. It's called, here's what you're looking at. If you press zero on your numpad, it will bring up the information about it. Okay? It will let you configure things and change things, and you can just explore this menu to change things how you like it. Right now, it's fine for me because we're not going to stay in this world long, so it's okay. The other thing I would like to point out is that you have a mini-map. Okay? Most map mods... Journey map, I believe, is the one we have, but there's also a voxel map, and uh, there's another one I can't remember the name of now, but there's a few of them. All of them give similar features. You have the mini map, you have a big map, which you can change. You've got day, night, topography, cave layer, whatever you want, really. I usually stick it on day and leave it there. But you also have waypoints. So for example, say our home is not around here. Let's just say our home was over here. You could set a waypoint here and you can do that with, there is a keyboard shortcut, but in a lot of cases, if you don't know how to do that, you can go to waypoints down here, you can click new and you can go like this, say this is my home. And then you can hit save and it will save it. Or if you do know the keyboard shortcut, which in this case for journey map is the letter B, is in boy or backpack. B. I don't know why it's B. There's waypoint doesn't even have a B in it, but whatever. And then you type home and press enter, click save, and it will save it. Now, when you travel too far away from it, it will literally be a beacon for you. You can be thousands of meters or blocks away from that point, and it will always direct you back home. Always. All right? Now, you don't want to have too many of these in the world. They are very useful, but the more you have, the more FPS you will lose. So be mindful of how many you have active at a time. And if you are starting to make too many, you can always come back into this menu and turn them off. So you don't need to know it, you know, if you don't need it. Like, for example, I always mark all the villages that I come to in my modded worlds. I don't know why. It's just a habit I have. Every time I pass a village, I feel like I need to mark it, but... I mark it and then I immediately turn the waypoint off because you don't really need to know where villages are in modded Minecraft. Maybe one, but that's about it. But anyway, you get the idea. They are very useful tools. All right, very, very useful tools to have in modded Minecraft. The map and the, the here's what you're looking at tooltip thing up at the top of the screen. Very, very important key features in modded. Now, even underground, you're going to see some things. You don't know what they are, but that tooltip will tell you what they are. In this case, this is a dark oak sealed crate from Charm. And if you break it, you get stuff. Ooh, that's a really good thing. These guys, use those. Use these things. These things are, are crazy. Uh, basically, this is a seed you plant on tilled soil, and it grows. And every time it can be harvested, it gives you a new item. Something different. Something random. It's a pretty, it's a really interesting thing. I don't, it's not that I, well, it says end treasure. I don't know how good it can be. I haven't used one in a long time, but it's very, very cool. Anyway, my point is come down to the mines and don't only mine what you know, mine everything. Just make sure that when you're looking at it, look, for example, this is sulfur ore and we have a stone pickaxe. Okay. So what it's telling you is that red X, it says X is not currently harvestable. If it's the check mark, it means it is currently harvestable. All right? So if it's an X, don't touch it. Don't mine it. Don't even try. You see the harvest level, that tells you what you need in order to mine it. Diamond does not mean you need a diamond pick. It's a little bit uh, misleading. It means you need something that can mine diamond, such as iron. So in this case, we could mine these guys with iron. And we can mine these guys with stone. That's what that means. 
All right. So mine everything you are able to mine. If you only have stone, find that iron because iron's going to allow you to mine a whole lot more. If you get to diamond, mine the diamond and make yourself a pick to, so you can get even more stuff. Collect everything that you can from down here. Chances are you're going to want it for something at some point during your playthrough. Get it all and bring it back to your safe house, wherever that may be. Store it in chests. Do what you need to do. This is part of the nighttime I was telling you about. This is a vampire. This is a this this is a mod thing. That's a vampire. He will try to drink drink your blood, and he will probably kill you because they're pretty difficult if you're not somewhat geared at least. Although iron armor is pretty much good for those guys if you know what you're doing. But anyway, you get the idea. You get the point. Mine everything and bring it back. All right. Now that you've collected a whole bunch of resources, now that you've gotten pretty much set up, you got some decent tools. Maybe you got some diamond. Maybe you got some iron still. Whatever it is you have, keep it close. It's now time for the fun part. Well... All of it's fun, really, but a different fun part. And that is to go exploring. Okay, this is one of the best ways to learn about mods. One of the best. You're going to find so many things by exploring the world. It is ridiculous. You'll find all crazy kinds of things. So what is this? I have no idea. Oh, it's a treasure to wishing well. What does that even mean? I don't even know the answer to this question. What do we throw into it? Do we, we have coins or something? Is there a coin? We, we do have coins. Are you from Treasure 2? No, you're not. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. There's interesting things. I didn't even know about that. I just learned something new. Treasure 2. Modded guys, help me out. What, what is Treasure 2? Because I actually have a regular series on this. I have a regular series on this. All the mods and vanilla. Go check them out. Ah, selfless plug. Shameless plug? What's the word? I don't know. Links in the description. Anyway, modded guys, help me out. What the crap is treasure to? Anyway, so adventure, adventure, adventure. Even in a typical these things, even in villages that you know you're going to find things you don't know, such as a teepee. You can sleep in teepee. They're beds. What are you? Medicine man? Get in your teepee. And then you have these guys. These are, these are cool. Waystones. Those are teleporters. If you find more than one, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, teleport between them. Another thing, you can pick them up and put them at your base. You can have teleporters at your base. Yes. Yes, you can. You have other guys who, who trade for different stuff. A machinist? What does he sell? I don't know. Go figure it out for yourself. You have this guy who is, uh, uh, what's his name? I know his name. Uh, Plague Doctor. That's it. Hello. I am the cure. Yeah. Good, good job for being the cure, buddy. Still have typical old iron golems, but they are not the fiercest mob in the game anymore. Not that they ever were, but anyway. Now, they, they, they thought they were. Let, leave them alone. Clerics are you still have regular stuff, too. But you get the idea, okay? You're going to have chests. You're going to have buildings. You're going to have things that you don't know. Investigate. Play with them. Figure out what they are. Just stay safe while you're doing it, you know? Recognize you may not be the best geared. Maybe you are the best geared. Play with stuff. That's really all there is to it. Crystallizer. What is he? He's got a thing. What are you? Hey, hey. Whoa. Yeah. Hedge witch. Bewitchment. Oh, you're a bewitchment guy, huh? I don't even have one of you in my regular series. What are you? You're a hedge witch? I've never even seen one of you. Purple lamp. Cool. Oh, these are cool. Coffee makers. <laughs> yeah, you can brew coffee. And they actually give you special effects. It's pretty cool. Very, very interesting. These guys, fermenting barrels. Oh, these guys have huge crates. You don't have one in here, guys? You got one in here, right? You always have one in here. Here we go. Bam. Look at the size of this storage crate. I love these things. Actually, additions. Very, very cool mod. Very cool mod. Everything in here is from actually additions, including the generator. We're going to get into that kind of stuff later. Anyway, go investigate. Find the things you don't know what they are. Pick them up if you can. Bring them back home so you can play with them when you want. That's the basic idea. Go adventure. Go collect stuff. Go see stuff. Go go play the game. All right. Home sweet library. Now that you're back in your house, safely 
two plus blocks above the ground, so nobody can get in, including you, unless you can fly, which, yes, is a possibility in modded. Then, you know, once you're back home, you're done, right? You're done? You've beaten modded? No, wrong. Eh, see ya. Now what you need to do is a little bit of research. Now, I say that hesitantly because a lot of people freak out about the word research, okay? I'm not sitting here studying over books for 12 hours trying to learn a difficult subject, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you find that item you have in your inventory now that you don't know what it is. You come to this screen that previously intimidated you because there's so many things to look at. 259 pages of what the crap, right? Relax. You're never going to come to this screen trying to find something because it has a search bar. So go down to that thing at the bottom. Type in whatever item it is. In this case, let's just type in the magic bean. Magic bean. What is the magic bean? What does it do? Oh, it tells you in the tooltip, obviously. But you know what I'm saying, right? You got it. Oh, we got, we got other beans. Okay, that's another good way to learn about things. It's just to search for random stuff. Or even in this case, you're like, oh, I'm looking for the magic bean. Type in bean. Oh, wow, we have a lot of beans in this book or in, in this mod pack. Oh, we got coffee beans? Where do I get your coffee beans from? I want some coffee. Or what about, oh, there's two different kinds of coffee beans? What in the world? Okay. Then you'll learn about stuff. And you're like, okay, what is this? What is this? What is this? The big thing about this is ask questions. Ask yourself questions. The answers to those questions, a lot of times, can be found here in the JEI if you search for the item. All right? Now, there's another very cool thing you can do. For example, if you come here to the Magic Bean, you're like, man, that thing is awesome. I want to see what else that mod has. Okay? The search bar supports special characters. And there are multiples of them. And you can go right in here to see some of what they are, such as search options. You can search for color, which is currently disabled. You can search the creative tab, currently disabled. Mod name, which is the one I'm about to show you, requires the prefix. Or dictionary, resource ID, tooltip. You get the idea, okay? So if you want to use these, you can do, you know, enable. Then that beginning character is the one you use in order to search. Okay, that's the special character you use. In this case, if we wanted to search or dictionary, we would type that. And we would type something. Well, wasn't it that button? Or I didn't put it on. Hold on. I need to figure this out. Things happen. Oh, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I enabled, but I didn't click done. I think I just clicked escape. All right. We're going to put it on require prefix. Done. Done. Okay. Now. Ooh, and then we type in or. I don't know. Here's all your ors. Okay. This is everything you can find underground. It's a ridiculous list. It's crazy. You're never going to remember what they all are and you don't have to. That's what the JEI is here for. It remembers all the items, so you don't have to. But you get the idea. idea. But like I was saying, if you want to see what else is in the Cyclic mod or any other mod, you see the blue letters. That is the mod name. Okay? You go into something that's not Minecraft, like actually additions or Cyclic or whatever. You can type in the at symbol and type in the name of the mod. Cyclic. And now you're seeing every item that is in Cyclic. All right. Cyclic is one of my favorite mods. That's why we're always going back to it, by the way. But it's a thing. Now, another thing. You saw actually additions. It's a mod name with two words. This is a little known fact, actually. A lot of people in modded don't even know this. But if you're trying to search for something specifically and you need to actually fully type out the mod name, just take out the space. So in this case, we've actually... You can type in additions, you know, and, and how, whatever portion of that word, you just take out the space, remove the space. That's how the search bar works in this particular version of the JEI, NEI, whatever you call it. You just take out the space. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, you can search for things. All right. If you know what you're doing, you can always search for things. Let me calm down. I was getting a little excited. I really like modded, guys. I really like modded. Now, well, there's a zombie over there in literally full armor going after. Look at him. He's in blue over there. He's got some special armor on. Anyway, so 
modded has a lot of stuff, okay? It's very easy to get overwhelmed. My biggest tip for you, don't focus on all of it, okay? Choose one thing at a time. Focus on one mod, one item, one thing, okay? Play Minecraft like you normally do and tiptoe your way into the modded side of things. Ask yourself questions. For example, when you're out investigating the world and learning about everything that can go around, and you're out here and you're like, man, I wish there was a way to sleep without having to go back to a bed. That's the moment. That's the moment. Everybody else has had that thought. So what do you think that means? You think maybe there's a way to sleep without being next to a bed, perhaps? That's the point. That is the point of modded, to add the things that Mojang themselves didn't. For whatever reason, granted, if they added all this stuff, then we wouldn't have vanilla anymore. Or this would be vanilla, which is a very weird concept. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Okay, ask yourself those questions. Is there an easier way to harvest crops? Do I have to break them? Nope. You can right-click on them. That's something that should be in vanilla Minecraft. Just right-click on the crop, and it will harvest it without having to break it first. You don't have to break it and then place it. You just right click and it harvests it, but only if it's fully grown. I'm right clicking right now. So you can hold right click over your whole crop of field and just go boop, 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 boop. And it will only harvest the ones that are actually fully grown. It's perfect. It's lovely. It's wonderful. Should be in vanilla Minecraft, but it's not, but it is in modded. That's the point. Ask yourself questions and see if there's a mod to answer them. Okay. But tiptoe your way in. Don't rush it. Don't think you have to use every modded thing that exists because I'm telling you it's not even possible. I've been doing modded Minecraft for a very long time and I'm sure a lot of the viewers here have as well. And none of us, I won't say none of us because I'm sure somebody has gone through and actually used every single item at least once or twice. But most of us have not used everything in the game. We don't even know what it all is because mods are adding them faster than we can play with them. Okay, it's okay to not know. It's okay to say, I don't know. That's what modded is about. Play with stuff. Figure it out. Learn. And if you really need to ask a question, then ask it in the forums. There's so many modded players out there in the world. Ask on Reddit. Ask on various... These guys are following me. Various forums all over the place. The mod page themselves, the mod creators, will have comment sections where you can ask questions. Things exist. That will help you, including the, the JEI here, including the forums online, including, oh, the manuals. I didn't tell you guys about the manuals. Most mods will have manuals. Let's go to Actually Editions. I'm pretty sure Actually Editions actually had, does have their book. I need to figure out exactly. I'm not on cheat mode, right? Okay. Here we go. So you have the Actually Editions manual. This guy right here, pretty simple to make, and usually they are. You don't even have to have it to look things up, though. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that the, this, they, this thing does. You can, you, know, you can make bookmarks. You can go back to the main page. You can literally look into everything with this mod. Each mod, not every mod, some mod creators even either have a small mod so they don't need one or they just aren't smart enough to include one or they're too lazy to include one, but... A lot of the more popular and better mods will have some kind of manual that will help you. For example, Cyclic. Let's go to Cyclic. I love Cyclic. Now what Cyclic does, if I'm right, it gives you little information tabs. Okay? And it will tell you exactly what they're used for right down here, crafting material. That means you can't use it. It's only meant for the crafting table. You don't need to worry about it in other cases. This right here, what are the boots? Stronger than diamond come from comes pre-enchanted with feather falling and depth strider. Who knew? I didn't know that. Does this one come pre-enchanted with stuff? Comes pre-enchanted with protection. Interesting. That's why it's a. Oh no. Okay. Where's the other chest plate? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm getting distracted by modded again, guys. It happens. It happens. Go away, cows. I don't want you following me like that. I'm holding seeds. I don't want chickens to follow me either. Let's yeah, hold a sword. Scare everybody away. All right. But you get the idea, okay? Ask yourself questions because the answers exist. Use that as a way 
to further your knowledge in modded, but tiptoe. Don't let the game overwhelm you. There is so much here. It is very easy to get overwhelmed. Take it slow. Pick a mod, one mod, pick one mod that you like and investigate it. And learn about it. Now we get into some of the more specifics, okay? This is stuff that we're not going into individual mods, mind you. There are way too many to do that with, but there are some features that just about every mod pack will give you in some fashion that I think it's important enough to tell you about right off the bat. And these are things you're going to love, okay? Now, the first one, you know how Creative Flight, right? They literally call it Creative Flight because in vanilla, the only way to get it is to go into Creative. Well, in modded, I can properly do this. In survival mode, you can also have it. I'm flying right now and no fall damage. How do I do that? Because of a mod called Extra Utilities that has an angel ring. Now, you're not going to know about this. This is only a demonstration to tell you how or what exists. Really, not how, but what exists. There are ways in vanilla to fly. There are various ways. This one is creative flight, but there's also jetpacks. Jetpacks are pretty fun. Let's go ahead and get the creative one just so you see uh, exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, can I, I, It has to be on my chest, I think, right? Boom. There we go. Okay, so now it's on my chest. So now... Hold on. Watch. Ooh. Hold on. Hold on. I got I got to get into a view where you can see. What's hover mode? I don't remember what hover mode is. We have a jetpack. We're literally bouncing up because every time you press space, you're, you're just... You, that's your propulsion. That's your throttle, if you will. It's just... That's it. That's what you got. I can go as high as I want with a jetpack. I let go of space. Probably die, but we're not going to let myself die. Take a little bit of damage, though. You get the idea. Okay? Now, just as an example, because I see this guy over here, the mobs can be dangerous. Watch him. Watch him. He sees me. Hey, buddy. Oh, you're... Okay, we're, we're going to let him blow us up. He just... Oh, he didn't. he didn't make it. He didn't make it. That is what we call a rocket creeper. Okay, he sees you. He doesn't just go kaboomy. He launches himself. Oh, that's cool. How do I do that? F? A lot of times it's F or G or something. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Just hold on. Go down. Okay, jetpack off. But you get the idea. All right, guys. You understand? Flight exists. Look for jetpacks. And look for rings or look, for, you can even search for creative. In some cases, if you search for creative, uh, you're going to get a lot of regular creative items too. It's not the best way to search for this, but it's actually a difficult thing to search for. Uh, you'll kind of gain experience. That's why I told you about a couple of them. Look for jetpacks and look for the angel ring. And those are your two best ones you're going to be able to get, I think. Uh, but you also have mystical agriculture will add flight to their supremium armor set the biggest the baddest one they can have so investigate that one if you want something cool too and you don't want to get the angel ring but you get the idea flight exists in survival mode and it's amazing the next little nugget of information i'd like to pass on to you are a little thing called magnets another thing that do not exist in vanilla Minecraft, at least not yet. It's another thing I think that should exist, and I don't think it's that overpowered. I could see it actually happening one day. But we all know all about the whole things get dropped on the ground, right? There's bees. Oh, bees. Sometimes those bees are just really dangerous, and I'm still in survival, by the way. But you see how items are on the ground. You have to get really, really, really close to pick them up. But in this case, if you have a magnet... You don't. When you get within a certain range of them, it just sucks them up for you. And it also works on experience depending on the magnet you get. I don't know if this one works on experience or not, but some of them do. There are really, really good magnets and there are terrible magnets. Just type in magnet into the JEI and see if there's one you know how to make. Next up for the tour... 
storage. We all know how terrible it is to keep things like this lying around your base. Well, in modded, this doesn't have to be a thing anymore. Granted, for most of it, it's still a thing for the beginning. But after a while, once you get enough resources, you can upgrade. And there are several options. First and foremost, if you type in chest, you're going to find extra... Uh, you're going to find a whole lot of chest pieces. But you're also going to find things like these. Like the iron chest. Or the gold chest. Or the diamond chest. Or if you really want to get fancy, the crystal chest. Okay? Now... We know how big this guy is, right? It's a regular double chest. Look at that. Single block, half the size, twice the space. Well, same space as the double. You know what I'm saying. Gold chest, even bigger. Diamond chest, even bigger. Gold chest, same size. Difference with this one is that if you put something inside it, you can see what's inside it. Though, be mindful of this, this does take a little extra computer resources. So you probably don't want to use these if your computer is not the most powerful thing in the world. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be the most powerful, but you know what I'm saying. Can we sleep? Can I, can I just, <gasps> okay. I'm only sleeping in a bed because it's literally right there. There's also a charm that makes it instant. I don't know if we have it in this pack. Doesn't look like, well, I don't know what it's called, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, you get the idea. There are storage options. Now, this is not limited to only chests, though. For example, there are, well, we don't have to find storage in this. What do we have? Applied energistics? How about we do the simple? We have the simple storage network, right? Okay, we'll use this as an example. So we have this guy, all right? This is completely different than anything you are used to. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just do... These guys, I guess. I'm creative, so it shouldn't matter. So, with this particular setup, you can link your chests together and then put this guy on there, have, however you really want to, really. It doesn't matter too much. Have the master and have this guy. And then all of a sudden, as soon as it detects all the storage and everything, there it goes. You can see anything that is in each and every one of these chests. I can put all this stuff in here and all this stuff too. And then we'll be able to see it right in here, which is very, very cool. I love the simple storage network. It, it, it has its limits and it's kind of weird and odd later on, but it's certainly 10 billion times better than this. And it's really not, not that hard to make. It's probably one of the first storage mods I would suggest you look into. The simple storage network. Very, very handy. But there's also others called refined storage, which is not in this particular pack, and applied energistics. And this one is very heavily complicated. Very, very complicated. It will take you a long time. Look for tutorials on YouTube. I even have one myself. And there are just... You're going to need help with that because everybody needs help with applied energistics. It's that complicated sometimes. But it is worth it. It's very, very, very powerful once you get to used to it. But storage. Look for storage alternatives. They exist. And even that crate. I just told you about the crate. Hold on. This is another, like, even before you go for this guy, look for these guys. Because one of these, you see how big this guy is, right? One of those is bigger than a diamond chest. Wait. That's 12 by 9. How big is this guy? 13 by 9. So this one's just a little bit bigger than the diamond chest. And they are so much cheaper. And they can be stacked however you want to stack them. That will hold so many items. This little pile will hold more items than all of these chests. Every single one of them. you probably double that to hold as much items. It's crazy. Storage. Storage. There are options for you. That's my bottom line. Uh, we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but we're going to go over it anyway. Diamond is the best thing that vanilla has to offer. Well, that is until 116 when Netherite comes out, but you get the point. The best thing you've ever played with, most likely, in a lot of cases. But in modded, that is not the best we have to offer. 
In modded, you can get so many other things. Some of them are worse than diamond. Some of them are better than diamond. Some of them just blow diamond right out of the water because it might as well just be leather armor. It's ridiculous in some cases. Some of this stuff is just so crazy that it's just, it's, yeah, it's just like that. Um, some of them give you boosts. Like if you wear the full set of Supremium armor from Act uh, no from Mystical Agriculture, they have their suits of armor as well. And if you wear a full suit of that, you get Creative Flight along with a few other boosts. Actually, I think you have to add that now, but you get the point. Armor. Look for better armor and tools. And you've already gone mining. You've already gone down and picked up a whole bunch of stuff. You probably have the resources to make something that is as good – if not better than diamond already. Like even rubies and sapphires or emeralds or amethysts. I think, I don't know if all of those can be used for weapons and tools and armor, but some of them can be. And they're not quite as good. I think they're actually just a little bit better than iron. But they are, they, there's your options. You don't have to use your iron. Iron is very useful, even in modded. Use those for tools instead. Use iron only when you have to. Okay, my next subject is more complicated. So try to bear with me. I'm going to do it as easy as I can. Modded players, if I mess something up or I say something wrong or don't include some kind of stuff, this is one of the big areas your tips I think are really going to help because it is such a complicated thing to understand in the beginning. But yeah, we're going to give it a shot. Anyway, so this is power generation, okay? This is the world of power. It exists in just about every single mod pack. The ones that don't have it will tell you that, hey, we don't have power in this. We Well, they call it, uh, what, the techie mods. Um, there's no technical mods. There's no, uh, I don't know what you want to call, what else they call them or whatever. But you'll, you'll know. They, they will say, you know, we don't have the power. No, there's no power generation. There's no machines. There's no, you know, whatever. Uh, but... If it doesn't say anything like that, chances are it has some form of power in the pack. Now, what is power? What do I mean by power? Power, think of electricity. Because it's basically what it is in this case. It is basically electricity. Uh, they call it different things. They call it RF. They call it EU. They call it, uh, this is RF. This guy uses, I don't know, something. I don't have a capacitor in there. But it doesn't really matter. If you see like an energy-like bar along the side, chances are it means it needs some form of energy. And usually whatever generator you can find will provide that kind of energy. And it will be okay in most cases. You won't have to worry about it. Uh, you'll just be able to hook it up. Now, if it doesn't connect or something else, that's when you got to do a little more research. Go YouTube things. YouTube things? Yeah, you can YouTube them. Or you could <laughs> you can Google them or, or whatever. You know, get your information. But chances are... If you connect them, then they'll work. Now, as far as this electricity goes, the RF, the power, there are generators. There are cables which transfer the power to the machines that use the power. So you have the makers, the users, and the in-betweeners. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. And that's the basic concept, okay? So when you want something done, for example, smelting items, this guy here... We'll smelt stuff. Give me a capacitor real quick. All right. And he's now gaining power. This guy, instead of using coal to smelt things, you can put your ores directly in here to smelt them. And it will only use power. It will not use coal. It doesn't need coal. It can't even use coal. You put coal in here, it'll turn into something else. And that's the point. Power is a, another way to fuel your machines, okay? And if there is a regular machine that uses fossil fuels like coal or something, chances are there's going to be a powered version that does it better or faster or more efficiently, okay? there's Chances are there's going to be an energy user to do whatever task you need done on an item. Chances are there's going to be a powered version. Okay, so always look for a powered version. If you need to smelt something, look for a smelter. If you need to crush something, look for a crusher. 
which is a thing you always want to do to your ores, crush them, because then you get twice the amount out of them. And yeah, that's about all I'll say there. You can learn the rest for yourself. But that's the idea. All right? Generator, transfer the in-betweeners and the users. Makers, users, in-betweeners. Now, for each one of these, the generators, the makers, and the in-betweeners, they all have multiples. There are crazy amounts of each. There are many things that generate power, many things that transfer power, and many things that use power. If you go in here to generate, gen, generate, yeah, words, um, great. Then you'll see a lot of things that generate energy based on certain factors. This one, coal generator, it uses coal to make energy. Simple concept. These guys down here, not so con not so simple. Extra Utilities has some weird stuff and very, very cool, like the Rainbow Generator. This one's fun. I still haven't gotten a chance to make this one full up yet. I want to make this go all the time. It's going to be amazing when I get there, if I can get there. Overclocked generator is going to be the problem, I think. But you have the Magmatic one, which is like using lava to generate energy. You have Potion Generator. Yeah, using potions. You got some potions you don't need? Throw them in this guy. It'll generate energy based on the complexity of the potion. The more steps it takes to make, the more power you'll get out of it. Pink? Anything pink. It will generate energy based on what pink item you throw in. Pink. I'm not kidding. Just pink. TNT? You explode TNT next to it, and it will generate huge amounts of energy from it. Yeah, that's also a thing. Slimy? Put slime. I don't know if it's actually regular. I think it is regular slime, actually. Slime and something else. I think that requires something else in there, too. Slime and something. But you get the idea, okay? Those are your generators. There are users. There are transfers. Look for a pipe or cable, something along those lines. If you're looking for a way to move energy from one place to another, look for pipe. Cable is your best bet. Look for cable. Now, along with these three things here, you also have the items that use energy. As far as items are concerned, you have some that store energy like this that are used for the sole purpose of charging your other items. Because a lot of times you'll have armor that have energy and you'll have items that need energy as well. So if you have six different things that use energy it's a lot easier to have one thing provide that energy in your inventory, and then when you need to recharge, you can just take that one item out to recharge it, rather than taking all six things out of your inventory and one by one putting them into the charger. Make sense? Hopefully? I'm hoping that made sense. I feel like that made sense to all of us who've played mods before, but I don't know about people who haven't, so I'm sorry if it doesn't make sense. But anyway... So this guy will hold the energy, this guy will use it. Now I was tell talking about the armor, how there is better ones. Tools included in that. What's so special about that? That's dirt. You can do that with an efficiency four pick. Uh, shovel. Not pick. Shovel. What's so special about that? Can your efficiency four anything do that? How about to all of the wood at the same time? How about to an entire house? Yeah. Can your efficiency for anything do that? Not all in one tool it can't. That used a lot of energy. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about when I say better options. There are better options for just about everything that you're used to. Look for the better stuff. The power stuff is going to take you a little while to learn. It's not going to be something you can pick up overnight, I don't think. Some of you maybe. Some of you are probably geniuses and already understand what I'm talking about and be able to do it now. But some of you maybe not so much, and that's okay. Learn it. Experiment. Try first. If you fail, if you can't figure it out, don't get yourself down. Just go ask Google. I guarantee you there is someone out there with the same question, and there's going to be several answers to it you will find a way through. Just ask. It's all it takes. Just ask your questions. Well, we kind of made quite the mess, huh? These guys are running away from a zombie. Bye! Don't worry, he'll burn to death soon. Yeah, we made quite the mess. I think it's time we move on to another place to talk about a different subject. One last thing I want to get out there, and that is 
food. Okay, you guys know all about the vanilla foods, and you know what? They are just fine in a lot of cases. Some mods will change how good food is. Some mods will make it so steak only gives you one hunger haunch and almost no saturation. So why would they do that? Because there are other food mods, one of which is Pam's Harvest Craft. But there's also the food mod XL or food editions XL or something like that. I don't, I don't know what it's called. Something, something is there is a food thing in here somewhere. Are you like, no, that's a, I don't know. There's another one. I don't even know if we have it in this pack. Ooh, Batania. I like Batania, but yes, it's a thing. Okay. Now watch this. Number one, if you shift and punch this guy, Oh, darn it. I'm in creative still. I forgot. Hold on. If you shift and punch the guy, then you will get the garden back. You'll pick up the item. Okay? And it's very important because if you place it somewhere in your invent in your area, it will grow them. It will actually spread. These things spread like like weeds. Or they did. I actually think they actually reduced how much they spread, but they still spread. It just takes longer. Now, why is that important? Because these guys Oh, I thought that would work even though I'm creative. Hold on, give me a minute. Because these guys, when you punch them without holding down shift, will drop extra items. And these are components to bigger dishes. If we take a look at Pam's Harvest Craft, let me just show you some of the stuff that they have here. Now, you see a lot of ingredients. That's the word I was looking for, not component, ingredient. You see a lot of ingredients, and then you get into the more sophisticated things. Like a pumpkin cheesecake. You want some pumpkin cheesecake? I want some pumpkin cheesecake. How about a BLT? You want a BLT? You want a BLT? How do we make a BLT? Like this. You need some toast? Oh, toast and cinnamon? Toast, toast bread? Okay. Yep. Rabbit holes, man. Rabbit holes. Food is actually some of the most complicated, at least from Pam's Harvest Craft, is some of the most complicated stuff to create in Minecraft, in modern Minecraft. It's, it's pretty crazy sometimes. Pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. Now, that's the thing. All right, just keep your eye on food. If you want to make something, try to look through this list to see what ingredients you can use to make whatever it is you want. I'm not quite sure if that last sentence made any sense at all, but there's one last thing. I know I said that was the last thing, but that last thing reminded me of another last thing. So this last thing... <laughs> Oh, I'm such a goofy person. Go check out my series. Links in the description. I'm a funny guy. All right, moving on. Now, let me, uh, do I need to go? Yeah, let's go creative again. Now, in the JEI, this guy right here, this is what this is called, the JEI, your list of gigantic amounts of items. There are several actions you can take. Now, I already told you about searching through various means, but I forgot a couple that somebody may have already left in the comments. And if you did, that's fine because I did forget it at the time. It's good. We're good. I'll still upvote it. But, and everybody else can too. But if you click on it, it will tell you how to make the item. Okay? This gives you the recipe for any item in here. It even tells you that. I didn't think there was one. You can do the altar of birthing to make... Okay, sure. It tells you how to make just about anything in here. Okay? And even if there's something in that recipe that you don't know how to make, you can click on that item to go into that one. And you can follow the recipe all the way down into its components. Now, if you do this and you go down three or four levels, to go back up one level, to go up one level, you just hit backspace. And you go up to the previous level where you just came from. You need to do it again and again. You can't. It's just, that's your back button. That's your up one page button is your backspace, okay? So when you're looking at these recipes, you can actually find what you need that way. But everything has a recipe. Well, almost everything has a recipe in here and it will show you how to make almost all of them. You don't have to worry about any of that, okay? The other side of things is the usage. And this is what I was trying to get at before with Pam's Harvest Craft. When I was telling you, when you get some of these ingredients, let's say you broke one of the, the things and you got the zucchini. 
Okay. And you want to know what you can use the zucchini in. What kind of foods can you make with zucchini? You push the U button. Okay. Or right click. You can right click on it and get the same menu. We'll say rutabaga. If you right click. So you can left click to get the recipe. It'll show you where it comes from. Or you can right click to get what it's used in. So it's usage. And it will tell you all of these things. Now I told you the U key will get you the usage. The same as the right click. So U and right click do the same thing. Well, left click gives you the recipe or where it comes from. But so does R. R for recipe. Right? So you can hit R on things too. You can do it in your inventory. You can do it anywhere. Uh, I need to get this again and then go here and then like this. And so if you have something, you pick something up and you're like, what is this? You hit R, it'll tell you where it came from. Or you can hit U and see what it's used in. Same kind of deal. Same deal. That's why I told you about the R and the U because left click and right click, they don't do anything when it's in your inventory. In here, they're good, they're good mouse shortcuts to use, right, left click and right click, uh, if you're not in cheat boot. But in your inventory, it's a little harder. So R and U are still very good, you know, hotkeys to know. R and U, recipe and usage. Anyway, that, that I think was the last one that I, I remember anyway. I'm sure the mod guys have something to remember that I forgot in the comment. Look at the comments. Look at the comments. All right. So as you know, I'm a goofy guy, but hopefully you understood most of what I told you in this video. People have asked me for this kind of video for a while in several different ways. Uh, some of them straight up ask me to do an intro to modded videos. Some of them ask me other questions that suggest they're new that I would have answered in one of these videos. So hopefully this settles some of those questions and hopefully you don't have too many more. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Either me or one of the other modded guys will, uh, will be sure to help you out. doesn't really matter too much. Somebody will answer your question. No, no doubt. Uh, but if you have any other suggestions for things that I should do a, a video on tutorial wise, uh, any particular mod that you have a question with any, anything really that you think people could benefit from a video on, then let me know in the comments. I'll read those as well. And I'll kind of take notes as far as what I should do next, as far as tutorial videos and stuff. But if you did like it, please do hit the like button. It will help it get higher in search rankings. So more people can find it and more people can get help from it. I'd really appreciate it, but thanks for watching guys. Peace out.